to become effective communicators and leaders. Our values are integrity, respect, service, and excellence. At this time, let us acknowledge our dignitaries her, who are in the room. Please use your emojis and reaction buttons and even give them your physical hand with the hand clap. Zoom coordinator, please spotlight our dignitaries. Our District 47 District Director, Distinguished Toastmaster, Shakira Taylor. Our Program Quality Director, Distinguished Toastmaster, Austin Kanonica. Our Club Growth Director, Distinguished Toastmaster, Lois Margolin. Our District 47 Public Relations Manager and also a Zoom coordinator for this session, Distinct Toastmaster Rodney Bain. Our District 47 Administration Manager, Distinguished Toastmaster Michelle Washington. District 47 Finance Manager and my personal mentee on, it, on the leadership team, Toastmaster Arlene Prudhomme. District 47's Logistic Manager, Distinguished Toastmaster Darren Kennedy. If you are currently serving in another District 47 leadership role, please give a thumbs up on the screen or wave hello so that everyone can see and recognize you. Our members with the Distinguished Toastmaster designation, please give us a thumbs up or wave your hand so you also can be acknowledged. Thank you. In a little more than 95 years, our organization has helped over 4 million people around the world to build confidence, receive career advancement, experience personal growth, and more importantly, become effective leaders and speakers. Even during the pandemic, Toastmasters continue to impact lives, not just professionally, but personally as seen in the culture and community of what we have created here in District 47. Attending Toastmasters Leadership Institute is one of the ways Toastmasters International uses to ensure our clubs remain healthy and successful. Club officers are required, required, required to attend training twice per year as part of their curriculum and commitment to serve members. At this time, we acknowledge all club officers who have been entrusted with the gavel of leadership who choose to show up today for this training. Thank you for showing up today. We encourage you to learn all you can and to take it back to your clubs, areas, and divisions. At this TLI, there's something for everyone. In this main room, we will have our inspirational speakers, Antonio Fernandez Elster, our morning keynote speaker, past district governor, distinguished Toastmaster Pamela Roll, who is also my sorority sister. We have two panel discussions. And finally, our closing motivational speaker. The two discussions that we'll have are Fun facts about YLP, or what I like to say, what's the YLP at 10 o'clock? And, and then at 11, reignite with pathways. Finally, at noon, our closing motivational speaker. Make sure that you come to the main room, be in the main room, stay in the main room, unless you are being trained at 11 for these sessions.
we want to go over some setup and housekeeping rules. If you're an officer, you must exit the main room and log into your officer training session at 11 a.m. to get trained and receive credit. Your Zoom details are in your email or you can chat with one of our Zoom masters. If for any reason you are having issues, please log back into the main room and private chat one of our Zoom masters, Derek Garcia Roll or Rodney Bain for today. We now bring to the virtual lectern our inspirational moment speaker, Antonio Fernandez Elster. Antonio is a Venezuelan architect. He has a master's in business administration in supply chain management at Nova Southeastern University, where he graduated with honors. Antonio began his Toastmasters journey because he wants to improve his English and English speaking and leadership skills. He has been a member of Toastmasters Interna International since May 2021 and is a member of Freedom Speakers Toastmasters. He, his pathway program, he's in leadership development and he is at level four. In November, Antonio won the Division A Shooting Star Award. His hobbies are watching movies, talking with his friends and technology. Nowadays, he is working hard in Toastmasters because he wants to become a distinguished Toastmaster. I bring to the virtual lectern our shooting star who will deliver an inspirational moment, Toastmaster Antonio Fernandez Elster. Starting is my life. I know that you may be thinking this member is a nerd. And guess what? Yes, it's true. You have a nerd member in the organization. And I am a perfectionist and I love achieve difficult goals. Good morning, dignitaries, distinguished Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. I love to study. If somebody could pay me to study, it could be a perfect job for me. I was living in Venezuela when I, when I studied architecture for five years. It was not easy, but I made it. Two years uh, after my graduation, I thought, mm, I need to improve my financial knowledge. And I decided to start a master in construction management. It was in Venezuela. When I finished this master at the age of 26, long time ago, I, will do, uh, I said, I will do an MBA, but in my 40s, effectively. In my 40s, I did a master in business administration in supply chain management at Nova Southeastern University and I graduated with honors. I was very involved in the graduated business student organization and as a finance director, and I won this award. In the future, I want to pursue a PhD because it's a personal goal. Have you met someone that loves to repair cars and all kinds of things? This is not Antonio. Uh, I like to, um, to do, um, to write essays, to, to read. Antonio loves Excel, pivot tables, Monte Carlo simulations, statistics. I joined this masters since I want to express better all the knowledge that I acquired during my career. And I want to improve my leadership skills. Currently, I'm part of the board uh, in Freedom Speakers Toastmasters. I am a Sergeant at Arms. And I collaborated 
in four area contests. Also, I, I will be collaborating as a contest chair in the Table Topics and International Contest in my club. According to my nerdiness personality, I enjoy every time that I'm doing a presentation since I am learning a lot. I'm very, I, I am very intellectual and I want to give you my best in every presentation. Sometimes my speeches maybe sound a little bit dense, but I want to share as much information I can with the group. Right now, I am in level four in my pathway, that is leadership development. And I'm doing my best. I'm doing that for my best and for my group development. I'm improving my vocabulary and my pronunciation. But the most important thing is that I am improving my self-confidence when I'm doing a speech. If I am making mistakes, that I can do it, uh, and I get your advice, you can be sure that I will work very hard to improve it in every single aspect. As I said at the beginning, studying is my life. And Toastmasters is part of my continuing education. Eight months ago, I began in Toastmasters and I did all these activities. I want to inspire you uh, to be a Toastmaster nerd and fast achieve all these goals. I'm challenging you to be the next shooting star. I'm learning with this opportunity and with every single speech. English is my second language. And if I can do it, you can do it. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. I don't want to cry, but thank you. If you can do it, we all can do it. This audience is the beauty of Toastmasters. Please give, show your expressions for our inspiration, inspirational speaker by giving him a round of applause and show your enthusiasm for Antonio with your emojis. Thank you very much. Now we want to bring to the lectern a message from our senior leadership team. Today, we are delighted to have my Zoom tech guru, Toastmaster Rodney Bain. Toastmaster Rodney D. Bain has been a member of the Toastmasters program since August, 2014. He has served as president, vice president of education, treasurer, and currently serves as the vice president of public relations of the New Providence Branch Club 3596. He served as the assistant director of program quality for area 92, as well as the public relations manager for division F. He is currently the public relations manager of district 47. He also still is active with club 3596, but also Club 7108, the ECA Toastmasters Club, and Club 1600. He loves his Toastmasters clubs. What can I say? Rodney is a writer, speaker, and trainer with a great passion for youth development. His talents have led him to book publishing, podcasting, video editing, website development, keynote addresses, keynote addresses and event hosting. With experience in the financial services sector, as well as a background in teaching, this led to the establishment of service culture firm, a customer service training and HR services and management consultancy firm. Rodney believes that everyone has a purpose. He is here to assist others to uncover theirs. He believes the successes of 
the tomorrow of tomorrow are determined by the sacrifices of today. Welcome to the virtual stage, our public relations manager, Toastmaster Rodney Bain. Thank you so much, Madam Division Director. Uh, and thank you, Antonio, for sharing that story. I mean, I, I love so much stories of that because that truly is what the Toastmaster program is about. Uh, in my uh, PRM, I, I'm looking for those kind of stories so we can share to let persons in the program know and let persons out of the program know what Toastmasters can do for you. Uh, I, I don't have a, a story like Antonio. English is my first language, but like Antonio, I am struggling still with it. <laughs> I am daily looking for new words. And, and they get stronger. And I, I, I have my issues growing up, but Toastmasters allow me to overcome certain fears, certain impediments that I have, and, and just help me get to this point. And two, if, if you told me last year that I would be in at Division A is TLI bringing anything, I would be in, that's not true. So I, I am amazed. I'm humbled to be here. I'm excited. I mean, if Antonio's story was just a tip of the iceberg of what today is going to be. It's going to be a very powerful day. So thank you all for helping me, Division A and guests, and let's just get into this address. I officially bring greetings on behalf of your court, on behalf of your leadership who are in training right now, trying to make sure they're better for you, but they do send their love, they do send their hearts, and they do send their greetings. I am, again, the Public Relations Manager, Toastmaster Rodney Bain. I am also here to support our leadership next up, we have our club growth director, the single source master, Lois Margolin. And we also have our program quality director, the single source master, Austin Canonica. And we are all led by the heart lady herself, make sure all hearts are clear. The single source master, Shakira Taylor, as our district 47 director. And again, we are here to serve you. We are here to ensure that you have a wow experience in the Toastmaster year. And even though Andrea said earlier, I am here to remind you, our mission as a district, not my mission, not Shakira's mission, not Andrea's mission, but our mission as a district is to build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. And what is most important, you heard it from Antonio, our clubs are our members. So we are here to make sure we help you, the member, achieve excellence. And whatever you deem as excellent, we had to achieve that. We are now in January. January is coming and going. So we are the halfway point of the Toastmaster year, but we are the new point of the new year. So whatever the goals you have set up for the Toastmaster year, ensure that you finish strong. Whatever goals you're setting out for this new calendar year, ensure that you start on the right foot. And we here in Toastmasters program, District 47, we are here to ensure that you get those goals. And Toastmasters is going to help you get those goals. So remember, finish strong, lean into the program, lean into your own self-confidence, and let's make magic happen. We are definitely here in major in District 47. Our theme for the year has been to reimagine and recognize and then rediscover. And one of the things I, I am so proud to be here to do is to recognize. We sent our email information out at the beginning of the year, celebrating clubs who hit five or more DCB goals. And DCB goals are important because it helps your report card to show that you are benefiting from the program. So I'm here to announce Division A, who was one of the top performers, had 10 clubs out of 61 represented here. So that's Miami Lakes Toastmasters, West Palm Toastmasters Club, Paul Speedwalk, Hollywood, Western Daybreak, Freedom Speakers, North Miami Beach, Team Entrepreneur, and Universal Toastmasters Club. If you are from one of those clubs, please just drop a heart emoji, share some, some thumbs up, just get some reactions so we can now see the, the members of these clubs who are making it happen. And if you are yet to be on that, and you know you're going to be on the club, let me see some heart emojis and some, some, some love in the chat or the reactions to show that, hey, we are going to be there and finish strong just like these other clubs are happening. And I, I love to see it. And again, 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 leadership is so important. And one of the reasons why you, Division A, are on this list 
in such representative fashion is because you have a team who's out there making sure they are there to train and to serve at you and make sure everything's happening. And this wonderful team is led by your Division A Director, the Singing Source Master, Andrea Robinson. And she is supported by Geraldine Hogan, Area 10 Director, Frenchie Roy, Area 11 Director, Fong Lu, Area 12 Director, BJ Area 13 Director, Nyla Area 14 Director, and Susan Area 15 Director. Now again, what I like about leadership is that we are here to serve. So these are the faces of not just the persons who are making sure things are happening, but these seven persons on the screen are here to make sure you achieve excellence. So lead into them, ask them, say, hey, I need your help, I need your assistance, let's make these things happen. And they are here definitely to make sure they are. Now, because I'm PRM, I have to have to have to drop some plugs and let you know what else is happening. So next week, I think, and I could be mistaken, but it's going to be the last week of TLI. So for whatever reason, if somebody is missing this awesome session, because it's going to be an awesome session today, if they're missing this awesome session today, they have they have one more session they can attend. That's um, TLI, uh, Division B is leading it next week. So don't miss that. If you miss this, you definitely cannot miss that one next week. I know this Chicago conference. We're going to reimagine this conference. And we are excited. We are excited. We are excited to just offer you, the members, and the persons who are interested, a chance to just reimagine what the Source Masters thing could be all about. So look out for more information as you lead to that. We talked about leadership early on. Let's talk about leadership one more time. We are upping the... We are upon the time where we are going to get district leadership applications in. If you are unsure or if you you know didn't didn't quite bite the bait the first time, we extended the application to the 31st. So I mean it's application for district director, program quality director, club growth director, division directors. If you are ready to step into leadership, if you are ready to grow. I, I promise you that is the other facet of Toastmasters, not just the speaking, but the leadership part. Email your, your application, DLC Toastmasters, DLC at Toastmasters247.org. Or if you have any questions, just contact the single source master borrowers at that same address. And he's going to show up that you get those questions answered. Because leadership, leadership, leadership is important because that's the guidance and that's the direction. And if you are just no, not too sure the benefits of this program, I am here to just to share a word from somebody else on their experience in leadership. My name is Fong Lu. I'm currently serving as Area 12 Director. Back in May of this year, when I was asked if I was interested in serving as an Area Director. At first, I hesitated. I didn't feel confident at all. However, I decided to take the challenge. Because I thought I have nothing to lose, but everything to learn. Fast forward now, after five months, into serving as an area director, I want to share with you the three C's that I learned through my experience. The first C is collaboration and connection. That's where I had the opportunity to connect and collaborate with many fellow Toastmasters in District 47 to host a very successful Area 12 speed contest in October. The second C is camaraderie. I believe Division A, Division Awesome, has built a strong sense of camaraderie where my fellow area directors help one another to serve successfully. And we also receive tremendous support from District 47 leadership team. That leads to the third C, which is confidence. Compared to five months ago, I am now much more confident in my ability to speak and my ability to lead. I want to leave you with this. 
if you are asked to serve as an area director, I encourage you to accept the challenge because you have nothing to lose, but everything to gain. And if Lou can do, so can you. Now, just a little secret, Andrea Norfong knew that I was in this part of his life. So I'm here to officially announce and congratulate Fong Lu as area director for the first quarter period and in December 31st. So please give some heart, some celebrations, some, some, give me some reactions. Just congratulating Fong. You see him personally, he's in the chat. Congrats, Fong. It's a big, huge accomplishment. Congrats, congrats, congrats. And the, the, the beautiful thing about that is last CLI, we had the division director of the quarter. Now we have the area director go at, at this TLI. This is from your area. That's a testament to show you the awesomeness that Division A has been doing and is doing, and they're going to continue to do. And we at District 47 Leadership, we are proud of all of you. We know the work you're going to do, and we encourage you to keep it up and let us know what we can do to make sure you can do it. It's not a coincidence that Fong and Antonio have similar stories to share. Take that. You start to encourage and motivate and carry you through the finish line, not to the finish line. And as our great Sigma Source Monster Tail likes to say, one is too small of a number. Find someone to carry with you because all of us win when all of us succeed. I am excited for today. And I'm looking forward to continually reimagine, recognize, and rediscover all those monsters can do for us today and more. Thank you so much. Back to you, the Senior Source Master Robinson. Thank you, Public Relations Manager. Thank you, Public Relations Manager Rodney Bain. Thank you. Toastmasters, if you aren't pumped up yet, that should have pumped you up. And if not, our next speaker is going to bring it and really have you levitating. Our keynote speaker is none other than distinguished master, Toastmaster Pamela D. Rowe, a past district area governor and past district Governor. Distinguished Toastmaster Roll is a 1993 graduate of St. Augustine's College in Raleigh, North Carolina, with a bachelor's degree in computer information systems. She earned a master's degree in business administration in 1996 from Nova Southeastern University. That's the same as Antonio in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. She holds the trust and estate practitioner's professional designation and is a member of the Trust Society and Estate Practitioners in London, England. Distinguished Toastmaster role is Vice President at City Trust Bahamas, Bahamas Limited and is a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. She joined Toastmasters in October 2000 and since that time has served as club president area and division governor, and all levels at the district trio, including district governor. Her philosophy on life is that in order to succeed, you must have a vision, you must have integrity and the highest ethical standards. You must have a great attitude and no matter what, always be your best. I present our keynote speaker, my soror, distinguished Toastmaster, Pamela D. Roll. The floor is yours, Sora. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, distinguished Toastmaster, Andrea Robinson. Good morning to everyone. How are you today? Happy Saturday. First of all, Thank you. I, I don't hear the claps, but I see those claps coming. First of all, I'd like to say good morning and pay my respects to our Madam District Director, Distinguished Toastmaster Shakira Taylor, 
members of the quad, as Toastmaster Rodney Bain said, our program quality director, distinguished Toastmaster Lois Margolin, club, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Austin Canonica, yes, and the club growth director, distinguished Toastmaster Lois Margolin. And of course, you heard from Toastmaster Rodney Bain. To all of our area directors, our past district officers, to all of our club officers, my fellow Toastmasters, good morning. I would like to start by congratulating Toastmaster Fung, Toastmaster Fung for becoming the area director for the first quarter. So congratulations to you. And Toastmaster Fernandez, if I had known you when I was studying for my professional designations and studying in college, you would have been a tremendous asset to me. Somebody who loves to study and who loves statistics and who loves pivot tables. You have an awesome success story. And I encourage you to continue with that zeal and that excitement that you have for Toastmasters. And you are someone who loves to achieve goals. So we definitely need your service in District 47. Thank you so much for that wonderful inspirational moment. So I'm gonna jump right into the presentation this morning. And when I am called on to participate in a district officer training session, I always remember when I served as a club officer I was new to Toastmasters leadership and very excited about the opportunity to serve the club members. Well, there were challenges along the way, but there were times when I felt that it just wasn't worth the effort. There were some things that worked well, yes, but then there were some things that did not work well. The mistake I made was rather than focusing on the things that worked well, I focused on the things that didn't go the way I had planned. At the district event last week, there was an event held last week showcasing the positions of district leadership and encouraging club officers and members to join and step up and be a district leader. At that event, I shared how I often recall my Toastmasters journey and why I wanted to become a member. And without giving my age away, I'd say 27 years ago, a friend told me about Toastmasters and invited me to attend a meeting. Well, of course, my first reaction was, I am going to give an excuse not to attend. I did not have a reason for wanting for not wanting to attend, but I knew my friend. He was persistent and he would keep calling and asking until he gets a positive answer. So finally, I had decided to attend my very first Toastmasters meeting and I enjoyed it, but I knew I couldn't commit to Toastmasters at that time. So it actually took me five years to make a commitment to Toastmasters. And during that time, I did visit a number of Toastmasters Club. Now, fast forward to me becoming a member. One year after I became a member, I was elected as a club officer. Wow, I was so excited because somebody chose me and vested responsibility in me. I couldn't wait to start my leadership journey. I was committed, I was ready to serve. But somewhere along that leadership journey, I became very discouraged. And the reason is because I received a poor evaluation. I remember that speech very well. It was project seven of the competent communication manual and the phase was research your topic. And the objectives of that phase were to collect information about your topic from numerous sources and support your points and opinions with facts and use examples from the information gathered through research. Okay, I love a challenge. So for this speech, I set up interviews with multiple people to obtain their opinions on a certain topic because that was a part of my fact finding and my research. 
after gathering all that information, I prepared my speech and I could not wait to present it in the club. I, and I'm usually very hard on myself, but I thought I did a good job with the presentation. Then came the evaluation. Today, I call it the dreaded evaluation. I felt confident about my speech, but the evaluator did not feel the same way. Fellow Toastmasters, I was completely humiliated. The evaluator said, I wasn't prepared. I did not meet the objectives of the phase. I needed to write the speech over and present it again. It was not a good speech. As my evaluator spoke, I cried. The tears came down my cheeks. And after that night, I never wanted to see or hear the word Toastmasters. I lost my confidence. I lost my drive and I lost my passion. So I made the decision to leave Toastmasters. For three months, I did not attend a Toastmasters meeting. I did not accept any calls. I didn't want to see anyone who called themselves a Toastmaster. And remember that friend I told you about at the beginning of my story? Well, he kept calling and calling and calling and encouraging me to come back to Toastmasters. Did I listen? Not at that time. But during the time away from Toastmasters, I had to reflect and I thought about how it took me five years to make a commitment to become a Toastmaster and why I joined. What was that magnet that pulled me in? Well, I'll tell you, I joined Toastmasters because one, I wanted to overcome my public speaking fears and I realized that the most positive and supportive audience in the world is the audience in a Toastmasters club. I was not going to let my destiny be defined by one person who could not give a proper and respectful evaluation. I joined Toastmasters to gain the confidence and the courage to lead. I was already a leader in my workplace and in the community, but I needed to work on my communication skills. And I understood that leadership and communication go hand in hand. I thought about what brought me to Toastmasters and I thought about how I felt after attending my first Toastmasters meeting. Well, you guessed it. Within a few weeks, I was back at the Toastmasters meetings and giving more speeches. You may not have experienced what, what I went through. I hope you never do. However, there may have been times in your leadership journey where you were challenged or lost your drive and your passion for Toastmasters. I'll tell you this, fellow Toastmasters, if you ever feel like your passion and drive for Toastmasters is fading, re-examine your purpose, re-examine your why. Know your why. That is the thing that compelled you to be a part of Toastmasters. The key here is you must be in it to win it. Now members join Toastmasters for many reasons, overcoming public fears, public speaking fears, gaining confidence uh, to lead and uh, the courage to lead and to gain confidence and to connect with, you peop with new people. So think back to what made you want to become a member of Toastmasters. What was that magnet that pulled you in? Also keep in mind that as club officers, the success of a club and its members depend on how well you and your fellow club officers execute your responsibilities. So just for a few moments, can you open your microphones and just tell us, why did you join Toastmasters in three words or less? Why did you join? or what made you want to become a club officer? Let's hear it quickly. Open your microphones and tell us. Overcome fear of public speaking. Awesome. Anyone else? To give back. 
Great, excellent. Would you want to give a little bit more when you say to give back? Tell us a little bit more about that. I have benefited greatly from Toastmasters, both in my personal business, spiritual, public speaking, leadership life. And I truly believe that to whom much is given, much is required. So serving as a club officer is my way of giving back to the club. Serving in the district is also my way of giving back to the organization. Thank you. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Thank you. Anyone else? Why did you join Toastmasters? To build self-confidence. Awesome. Anyone else? To become a better speaker. To become a better speaker. Isn't that wonderful? Do we have more people? Come on, this is going to be interactive, right? I don't want you falling asleep or, you know, just maybe watching something on TV while I'm talking. I'm going to call names if I don't hear from you. So let's develop, share with each other. To develop leadership skills. Thank you, Toastmaster Alex. Yes. I am a very talkative person. I have no problem speaking in public, but I wanted to be more precise and accurate because I was going to talk to clients who are scientists like me. I wanted to be more eloquent speaker. That's why I joined Toastmasters, but Toastmasters gave me so much more than I asked for. That's why like the other members, I decided to be a club officer to give back to my club. Fantastic. Two more, two more. Let's hear two more. Improve. Yes. Become a better speaker and leader. Okay. Yes. Fear speaking to superiors at work. Oh, th that's a good one. That's a good one. Improve my English and my leadership skills. Awesome. Thank you so much. You have heard it and you've heard it from your peers. The reasons why they join and the reasons why they wanted to become a club officer. And that's what we're talking about today, reigniting that passion for Toastmasters, thinking about the thing that compelled you to want to be a Toastmaster and thinking about the thing that compelled you to want to be a club officer. So when I say we're in it to win it, that means that we are, we have the ability to reignite our passion for Toastmasters when things don't go as planned. And even when things go as planned, it's so easy to say that, oh, I love Toastmasters when everything is working out so well. And when things are not working out so well, do you still love Toastmasters? Well, you should, because we are in it to win it. And that means putting in the work. And as club officers, when you put in the work, you will have a successful outcome. And that successful outcome will resonate, not just in your club, but in your personal life. You would want to do more things in Toastmasters. You're gonna benefit so much from this organization and you're gonna benefit so much from the skills that you have learned in Toastmasters that what you will feel like going to the top of the mountain and just shouting to everyone that I love Toastmasters. Now, sometimes you may say to yourself, self, I've tried this and I've tried that. And I failed at so many things. It always seems so hard. And you continue to make excuse after excuse about why you lost your passion or why you choose to call in sick and not attend a club meeting or a club officers meeting or why you choose not to fulfill your duties as an officer. And you make, or you may make an excuse why you chose not to be that servant leader. Well, as a club leader, tell yourself, self, it does not matter how many times I fall or how many times I fail at something. I will get up and I will keep trying. Irish novelist Samuel Beckett said, ever tried, ever failed? No matter, try again, fail again, fail better. When you want to be the best, you must follow the best. When you want to be the best, you must learn from the best. Who is the best? You, you fellow Toastmasters, you are the best. We learn from each other. You heard, 
your peers share the reasons why they wanted to become a member of Toastmasters and why they wanted to become officers of the club. And these are the ideas that we share together so that we can achieve goals together. And this is what you will learn in the TLI sessions today. You will learn how to be the best and you will learn how to use the tools in Toastmasters to sharpen your talents, to become the best leaders and the best Toastmasters. Hey, you already have an area, area director 12, who is the area director of the first quarter. Hey, you're well on your way to sharpening those talents to becoming the best leaders in Toastmasters. Thomas Edison, inventor of the light bulb, failed over 1,000 times. Imagine that. Henry Ford failed and went broke five times before he succeeded. R.H. Macy failed seven times before his store in New York City caught on. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. Could you imagine? Sir Sidney Poitier, after his first audition, was told to stop wasting people's time and go and be a dishwasher. 12 publishers rejected J.K. Rowling's book about a boy wizard before a small London publishing house agreed to take her on. Walt Disney was fired by a newspaper editor because they said he lacked imagination and had no good <laughs> ideas. Now that's something to laugh about. Walt Disney went bankrupt several times before he built Disneyland. What is the common denominator here, fellow Toastmasters? These people, all of them, were passionate about the things they believed in. Can you imagine what it took to reignite their passion after so many disappointments? According to Merriam Webster, to reignite means to, to begin or to cause something to begin or to burn again. I love that word, to burn. To reignite means to reawaken, to recharge, to reinvigorate, to restart, or to refresh. Reigniting our passion for Toastmasters, it simply states that in our district, in our division, and in our clubs, we will reawaken our passion for Toastmasters and begin to burn again for Toastmasters. I'll give you an example. If you set fire to something, what happens? Doesn't it burn? Well, if it's a good fire, it will burn. So that's what we want, to reignite our passion and to burn and set fire on ourselves when it relates to Toastmasters. We want to rekindle our passion for Toastmasters. But you may ask, how? Hmm. How do we reignite this passion? Well, I told you, it starts by being in it to win it. Reigniting your passion starts by being confident, having that conviction, having discipline, like other goals that you may have in your life, and, and Toastmaster Fernandez said it so well in his inspirational moment, having those goals in life, they're good. Having goals in Toastmasters, they require confidence and discipline to meet your objectives. And while you're doing it, you learn new skills. Reigniting your passion in Toastmasters starts by focusing on the journey, not just the goal. So club officers, you are six months into your roles and there are some things that may have worked very well, but there may, be been, there may have been some things that didn't work as well. You may need to re-strategize and do some things differently for the next few months. You may need to build stronger teams to help each other. So I would like to hear from you in three words or less, so if you can do a little bit more than three words, that's fine. What are some of the lessons you learned in the last six months as a club leader? Tell us quickly. No. I didn't hear that. 
that you can't do it alone. You need help. Absolutely. Absolutely. You need, you need help. You need help. Yes. You need stickability. That's a good one. Stickability. See, we are in it to win it. Absolutely. You have to be willing to adapt and be very flexible. Yes, I like that one. You have to be willing to adapt and be very flexible. Okay, anyone else? That creating leaders within your group is what really it's going to keep the longevity and the success of your club. Okay, very good. So, okay. So you, you had some lessons, I'm sure. There may have been conflicts, but in Toastmasters, we are taught how to effectively deal with conflict. We are taught crisis management. That just doesn't happen on your job. That happens in Toastmasters as well. Has anybody had to deal with crisis management as a club officer in the last six months? Have, has anyone had to deal with conflict? Okay, well, if nobody had to deal with conflicts, great. That means we're all well on our way. I believe that we were all born with talents. We were all born with certain gifts that were given to us by a higher power. What we do with those gifts is completely up to us. Sometimes it takes a while to recognize what your gifts are, but once you recognize those gifts, then it is your responsibility to develop those gifts that were entrusted to you. I'll tell you a story. This is a story of a master who was leaving his house to travel. And before leaving, he entrusted his property to his servants, according to the abilities of each servant. To one servant, he gave five talents. The second servant, he gave two talents. And the third servant, he gave one talent. The master went on the journey and after the journey had ended, he returned and he asked each servant for an account of their talents. The servant with five talents was so excited. Master, I worked hard and I doubled my talents to 10. The master was impressed and said, well done, you did a great job. You've been so faithful with the little I gave you. So I am going to give you more. The second servant with two talents also worked very hard and was excited to share with his manager or his boss or his supervisor that he had doubled his two talents to four. Well, the manager was impressed and said, well done, you did so well. You have been faithful in the little I gave you. I will give you more. The third and final servant who was given only one talent. He had the least of all the servants. He told the master, well, I was afraid and I didn't know what to do with my talent, so I buried it. The master was not pleased and he reprimanded the servant. So he took that one talent away and gave it to the servant with 10 talents. So the servant with 10 talents now had 11 talents. So the more you do, the more you give, the more you get. In Toastmasters, the better you are, we love to give you more work because we know that you are responsible, you are growing and you will do things well. Every hurdle you need to pass builds you up for a greater one. As you work to develop your talents, my fellow Toastmasters club officers, you start as a good person and then you work towards becoming a better person. Then that better person will soon be the best person ever. So I encourage you to use the talents that were given to you. Use them wisely. We are all unique and we have our individual contributions to make to Toastmasters. 
If you are a good singer, keep practicing. You will soon become a better singer. If you are good at organizing, continue to organize and you will become a better organizer. If you are a good mentor, then become the best mentor. If you are someone who enjoy inspiring others, then be the best at inspiring. If you are a good Toastmaster, and I believe you are, then become a better Toastmaster and eventually become the best Toastmaster. If you are a good club officer, and I believe you are, then become a better club officer and eventually become the best club officer. Our founder, Dr. Ralph Smedley, believed that by building and practicing public speaking skills and other skills, we would develop and we would enhance our confidence, leadership, thinking, and listening skills. So on this journey to reignite your passion, it's not an escape from our frustrations, but it's a journey to triumph over them. Club officers, your journey should be dedicated to building a stronger club and dedicated to giving yourself excellent service and to giving each other excellent service and most importantly, giving your members excellent service. Your journey should be to reignite your passion for Toastmasters by attending officers meeting regularly and having officers meeting regularly and avoid calling in sick when you have a responsibility to do. Find creative ways to keep your club members engaged. Find creative ways to reignite your passion in Toastmasters. And by doing this, you would see that that's the difference between a good club and a great Toastmasters club. Remember the things that excite you about Toastmasters. Give a speech about it. Rediscover your purpose. Remember what you love to do and remember the purpose for doing it. As you reignite your passion, remember that Toastmasters gives us confidence. It gives us the ability to communicate, to persuade and to lead. It gives us the skills to tell our story and point others in the right direction. So as you attend the sessions in today's TLI to learn about how to become better communicators and better leaders, let the tools you learn in these sessions help you to be your best. This is what Toastmasters is designed to do. We never stop learning in Toastmasters because this is the place where you continue to expand your skills. So I encourage you fellow leaders to take advantage of these tools and invest in your talent. You would be amazed at the results. So reflect and reset, reawaken and recharge, reignite your passion for Toastmasters. And remember, you are in it to win it. Thank you, Madam District, Madam Division Director. Thank you very much. Thank you, distinguished Toastmaster Pamela Rowe. Wow, wow. Isn't she inspiring? I am so full right now. Thank you so much, my dear sorority sister. You, I leaned on the shield. You came through. Thank you very much. At this time, fellow Toastmasters, we are going to get into our first session of educational workshops. And joining me as facilitator is my co-area director from a couple of years ago, Lisa Kumis, who will help me. First of all, we also need, she put into the chat, the evaluation link for our distinguished Toastmaster, Pamela Rowe. Please complete that. The link is only active, I believe, for one day but please share your thoughts and let's send some love to our keynote speaker. Thank you very, thank you very much. Lisa, the floor is yours. <laughs> 